Thank you for coming to our presentation. And as you see, you cannot rely on technology, and you cannot trust technology. I tried to get here early, and I was uh, in this room for the previous presentation, and they had the same issue. And uh, we thought that uh, by the time we will switch to my presentation, everything will be fixed. There is uh, a switch problem between the SCD and uh, the, uh, the computer. So I don't like to do presentation in this kind of situation because we have a lot to cover. And uh, so I'm going to try to skip some of this stuff and uh, we'll get to the actual case study that the team will show us. And uh, maybe we inside, once we are inside Canvas, things will be much, much better. So uh, I'm going to skip uh, some of uh, uh, this. You guys, I just want to warn you, if you are here to learn about how to design game, this is not the presentation for you. Uh, our intent is basically to show you how you can use game elements in the design of uh, your core structure. So that's why uh, this is not game design. This is more like using game elements in your course design. Uh, basically, what we plan for you is uh, to uh, talk briefly about general consideration of gamification. What are the things that you need to keep in mind what, when you are doing gamification? And also, I have a research background, so I like always to go back to the research and uh, talk about conceptual framework and also the theoretical background that underline the actual design of the presentation. And then we will get into the experimentation, which will be the case study of uh, a philosophy class that team actually taught this uh, spring, and uh, he used a, a gamified cost design. And then we will uh, discuss the result and what we have learned from that uh, presentation or that uh, experiment. Good. Uh, I'm just going to skip through this. You, the game, the gamification is basically using game mechanics in the cost design. And uh, it has the potential to improve a student experience within the learning a environment. And also, it has the potential to really motivate the student in terms of the content that they are learning. We have some of uh, the theories behind uh, uh, the gamification uh, uh, process, I would say. So these are some of the people who have done research on gamification. So let's skip to the conceptual framework. And these are some of the elements that you need to consider. So we'll make this uh, a slide, the slide available to you at the end. The conceptual framework actually evolves around the concept of motivation. And you guys know that uh, you cannot actually teach a course without any, you know, without motivating your student. We have the extrinsic motivation and the intrinsic motivation. So those are, those kind of uh, motivation actually it triggers some psychological outcome that leads to behavior changes in the way the student actually act and interact with your content. And uh, that's uh, basically what we are, will be trying to cover uh, through the case study that we have. Okay, the next step, uh, the theories, the learning theories or the psychological theories that underline the game design, uh, the gamification process. And the first theory that I look at and I have always been a fan of uh, Keller in terms of uh, the ARC model, attention, uh, relevance, confidence, and uh, satisfaction. Those are important elements in terms of motivation. And so we look at that, we look at the relevance, we look at uh, the confidence, and we also look at the satisfaction and all how those interact to bring what we call the learner satisfaction or motivation. I can see. <laughs> okay. 
the other theory that we look at uh, is basically the theory of uh, self-determination theory. is uh, a theory that has been around for many, many years. Uh, largely, you know, explained by Desi and Ryan. And out of that self-determination theory came out what they call cognitive evaluation theory, CDT. <laughs> CDT, and then the other one was organic Organic Integration Theory, or IT. So those theory, in a sense, actually impact the self-determination theory. And again, there, there are a lot of research out there talking about the specific element of those theory and their impact on the psychology of uh, the user and also their behaviors, uh, whether they are intrinsic or motivational, uh, intrinsic or extrinsic uh, motivation. This is uh, a theoretical foundation that uh, a we have from uh, Deterin. Deterin is from Europe and has done a lot of research, so he came up with this as part of a way to uh, look at uh, what happens when you have a gamified a design of a course. And uh, he called it situated motivation affordance. Now, the other theory that you can consider when you are looking at uh, gamifying your course design is the universal design, a, a for, universal design for learning. I was at uh, one of the presentations yesterday and uh, they largely talk about this. You do it. They use a kind of how you make sure that uh, your class is uh, accessible, is designed in such a way that every single type of learner can actually afford to interact with the content. So this is something that you need to pay attention to when you are gamifying your course content. Now, I'm going to head it over to Tim, and Tim is going to show us how he actually designed his uh, philosophy course and how to he gamify it. So let's go to Tim. Would you, would you mind pulling up Canvas for sure. me? Sure. <clears throat> and if you wouldn't mind driving, that would help. All right, let me go to. What I'd like to do is, uh, introduce you to how you might start gamifying uh, your class if you're still not entirely sold on the idea of gamification. How can, how can you dip your toes into this idea without uh, going whole hog and uh, ending up with a difficult semester? So what I did was I gamified my introduction to logic class. One of, one of the game elements or game mechanics that's really easy to get on board with is just a theme. And so you can see that the theme that I chose was intellectual judo, uh, logic as intellectual judo. So that's it, that's a game element, uh, encompassing the entire course within the theme of judo. Let me read this uh, introductory paragraph to you very quickly. It says, welcome. Like judo, logic requires focus and practice. Also like judo, logic is very challenging, but it can be enjoyable when approached the right way. To add an element of fun, therefore, the course is structured around the theme of logic as intellectual judo. I am Timothy Linehan, your sensei for the semester. Welcome, judoka. Ray, would you go into judoka? So they're landing on this for the very first time. Maybe it's an adult learner who's to judoka. Maybe they're feeling leery about, you know, what is this all about? For each, for each of these uh, phrases that I use, they can click in and they see that in our game, game language, judoka just means a student of logic. Now, what does this add? Well, frankly, not much, except a little bit of interest, right? It's logic, it's intimidating, but when you log on and you see that, oh, okay, I'm gonna be earning belts, we'll get to that in a moment. This, okay, this judo thing's kind of fun, right? I'm trying to soften the entry to what can otherwise be a very intimidating uh, course, a very intimidating discipline. Go ahead and go back there, Ray, please. So one thing I think, the first step would be for your discipline or what you're teaching, what's a theme that would work for you? What's something uh, that would, in the least bit way, relate to your course? Now, you may notice I don't have any buttons on, right? I choose not to play at the conference, okay? I, I, I'm half kidding, but the point is, I wanted to make the point that uh, I'm kind of a skeptic about a lot of these things, right? It, I'm a philosopher. It, took me a while to figure out what could an iPhone add to Play-Doh, 
right? If we're learning about Descartes, how is an iPad gonna add anything to cogito ergo sum, right? I think, therefore I am. I'm a Luddite at heart. I don't wanna jump on the latest bandwagon just for the sake of being cutting edge, right? And so I wanted to sort of appeal to you skeptics out there that when I first started just playing around with this gamification, it's a very thin veneer, the gamification, I first started getting hooked when I realized they won't stop calling me sensei. <laughs> I kept getting all these emails. And they kept calling me sensei. And I would say, no, it's Timothy. Just call me Timothy. OK, sensei, sir. <laughs> right? And uh, of course, I can't see them because this is online. But I'm sure they're bowing to me as they send in their, I mean, Look, all I'm saying is everyone bought into it, hook, line, and sinker. And I was, I was amazed because I thought, you know, being a natural eye roller myself, right? No, oh, jeez. Right. This stuff is silly. I have a natural uh, weariness to anything silly. It just didn't happen. And so, uh, you know, if, if you come from that same camp, I would encourage you to give it a try. Let's go to the, uh, the belt levels, right, over on the left, the modules. So, of course, there's an introduction there with the, the classic start here and so on. But here's the point I wanted to make. A lot of the other workshops have gone into the you know, really technical stuff, and they've, they've done some coding in the background to get the skins that they want. You'll see here that this is just Canvas as you've used it. Right? But all I've done is uh, sort of shaped it to the way I wanted it. So the first module is, actually, that's old. You can ignore that. But uh, the tournament area, that's called the Shaijo. The white belt one is what we just call module one, white belt two. And then, go on, go ahead and scroll for me, Ray. Then the, you work through your yellow belt, your green belt, your red belt, and so on. So this is no different than chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. I'm just calling them belts rather than units. And they're just earning belts rather than earning grades and so on. I, and so uh, I think what I learned most of all was being someone who's a little skeptical of all this, I didn't have to transform everything I was doing. It's just a different way of talking about it, a different way of setting it up. And uh, I was surprised how much mileage I got out of that, considering I didn't really change all that much. OK, so you've seen the theme. You've seen the working through in progressions with belts. Of course, these are all locked, and they can only work through in a progression. Right? You start at white belt, and you move to black belt. And I've chosen to make this mostly uh, self-paced, although I'll send out emails saying, you know, you're getting behind, you need to get going. And every once in a while, I'll have to force a due date on somebody. Um, let me quickly have any questions about the basic setup. Any, any questions on uh, what we have here? Let me introduce one more game element then. For each of these, at the end of, uh, let's see, can you go to the end of Yellow Belt? Right. So we're in Yellow Belt. Go ahead and scroll down. And these are just lectures and videos and uh, you know, regular stuff that you're all familiar with. Keep going down to the bottom, all the way down. And then, now, when they get to the bottom, what we have is YB1 practice round right? and YB round practice two until they're ready, ready for the boss challenge. So each of the belt levels ends with a, a boss challenge. And again, please understand, it's just a test. <laughs> It's all, it, uh, it's all it is, only we call it a boss challenge, right? And uh, you'll see in the results that that matters, okay? And we've actually done some research here. And secondly, I'm buying into the model of competence, right? A compet uh, a compet uh, can't get it out of my, out of my mouth, right? Competency-based grading rather than the traditional grading. But again, that, I was very leery, right? Uh, this is scary stuff to completely change your model. So what I've done is, Everyone gets three attempts to pass the boss challenge. Where did I get that idea? Probably from Mario Brothers or some of the earlier games, Pac-Man. Three attempts to pass the boss challenge. And you must get a D or higher. I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna go more bold in the future and make it a C or higher, or maybe even a B or higher. But they get three attempts. Guess what happens if they don't pass the boss challenge within three attempts? They're done. They're done. You're out. Nice having you, right? Now, of course, I set it up that there's all these buffers along the way, right? I tell them to email me if they've uh, spun through their first two, first two uh, attempts and they still haven't passed. But here's the point. That's another game element. The challenge, right? The, I don't like the word pressure, but this idea of a task that's timed, and it's a challenge. That's what gaming is. It's mastering a challenge that's presented with you. 
So they, they know that I have this boss challenge coming up. I have three attempts, and if I get p past the first two and I still haven't passed, if I've burned my first two attempts, I'm in big trouble. My entire semester is on the line here. But that fosters the communication I need. They'll shoot me an email. I'll go into the back and I'll see what they're missing, and that fosters good communication between us. Lastly, before we get to the results of what happened here, I have what's called a redemption opportunity, right? Just like a leveling up in a game or when you earn an extra life, it's right in the syllabus there that if they do burn out their three attempts without passing one of the boss challenges, and they're effectively out of the class because they cannot progress, then uh, I have what's called a redemption opportunity. And they write me with a, an action plan of how they're gonna change what they're doing, and uh, I approve it, and, they get, and they're off and running again. If it happens a second time, then they're out. Now, in the trial run in the spring, we just finished with it, um, nobody bombed out. Nobody, I had two students who had to ask for redemption opportunities to have, it's called a second life, that's what it is, who had to use their second life, but they made it all the way through the course, and I believe, this is just anecdotal, but I felt like we had a connection. They were emailing me. They, they used me as the instructor in the way that most students ought to. Right, daily communication, so I, I felt like that worked quite well. So that's gamification in this very modest sense that I'm encouraging some of you to try. A somewhat competency-based model rather than traditional grading, the layout to level up like games where you have to go through the progression and show master as you go, redemption opportunities, and all the rest that you're familiar with from Pac-Man. Okay. So just with those very simple elements that everyone in here can do, because it, it's just using the elements in Canvas. I didn't do any extra coding or get any help from someone to set up anything fancy. Just sort of branding it differently and, put, and, and writing the syllabus differently. Uh, we came up with these results. Now traditionally, logic has uh, more difficulty than some of the other courses with retention and success. Uh, but down here in the bottom line, 5155.3, that was our case study. That was the first run online. You can see that we did better than all other logic courses. By the way, those are all me. So we have that variable held constant as well. They're, they're my courses. Now, of course, we only had uh, subjects of 20, and we've only done this class once. But it was a success. We see that uh, there was a significant percentage higher in the gamified online course than all the other philosophy 155 courses. Now one thing to add to that, this was the only online course. The online course did better than my face-to-face -face courses, and I'm not sure how to feel about that. <laughs> they're, literally, they're literally sitting at home, probably with the kids fighting in the back, or after just getting home from work, and they're sitting in front of a screen with their textbook. And they're doing, and they're learning logic, doing proofs in symbolic logic. And they did significantly better than when I'm in the classroom with them, helping them through the exercises and so on. So that's the, uh, excuse me, that was the retention rate. And, and the success rate as well. Uh, we had 75% success rate, which is, you know, a shade better than overall, much better than all over on, online. And again, these, this is in comparison to my other logic classes, 1% uh, better, based, including face-to-face. -face. Right. So they're interesting results. And uh, in particular, I'm excited to continue with the experimentation because uh, I learned a lot along the way. And uh, what I learned is this. I'm going to go deeper into the world of gamification, not draw back, uh, because I think it could have been even better. Let's get to the, uh, yeah. the, the Ray, do you want to yeah, take it over? It. Okay. In addition to the actual uh, results that we collected from the experiment, did we also look at uh, the survey that we actually assigned in that particular survey? And uh, this is the result of the survey. We have uh, seven questions, basically asking them about the experience with uh, the gamified course 
that you took and also their satisfaction about that gamified course. And uh, out of uh, the student, 20 students, you have 40% response rate, which is not that great, but still, uh, you have very positive results and feedback from the students. So the last two minutes, we'll just go scroll about the, some of the stuff that the students have said. We ask them to comment about uh, the experience. So to tie it back into the, the theme that of our abstract of the reason you came, right? We were talking about motivation, <coughs> outcomes. This student wrote, type of environment kept me motivated. I also liked the competitiveness. Actually, if we have time, we'll have to go back. I forgot to show you the Shaijo, which is the leaderboard. Uh, it was great. It motivated me to not only pass, but to go and retake until I got the best grades possible. Now, that's within those three attempts. It pushed me into being a better student. Long comment here. Truly need to know what you just learned in order to move on. How's that for a concept? You actually have to know what you're doing before you move on to new material. It forced that, and that student recognized the value of that. I thought this was the worst, and I ended up loving it. Oh, excuse me. Out of my four classes this semester, I thought this was the worst. I get that all the time in logic. And I ended up loving it. This was also my fifth online class, and I really wish more teachers set up their courses like this. I was driven to earn points to try and win. Okay, I was a little nervous earlier. I forgot to go, go over my system of earning points, but let me make the most important point right now. The, the Shaijo points, as I call them, are utterly and entirely unrelated to grades, <laughs> right? So when they're doing their judo tournament, which is just a leaderboard, they earn points, but the points are for doing behaviors that, learn to, that lead to success, like being in contact with me during virtual office hours. Uh, you. Yeah, right. Sorry, emails. Emailing me with extra homework and so on. So when she says, or he, I was driven to earn points, keep in mind that that has nothing to do with the grading. Sure, I'll do that on the, on the, on the course. Right. More motivation to continue earning non-graded points. Since no extra credit was awarded prior to surveys, extra credit points would have been a good motivating factor. And that's one suggestion that I took for the course that I'm doing right now. I'm rerunning this course. In fact, every morning when I wake up, I have to do some maintenance on it. Right? And uh, one thing I did this time around was I made the Shaijo points a little more valuable. They can actually learn, uh, earn new attempts by earning these Shaijo points. I was, I was kind of stingy about it. They have to work hard to earn an extra attempt, but there's more value to earning those points now other than just simply seeing yourself on the leaderboard. Lesson learned. We know that uh, the size of the class for this experiment was very low. So basically, next time, I think that we'll be running more classes uh, using the gamified course design and see how that will change the retention and uh, the success rate for the classes. And then we'll actually try to ask af after uh, other faculty to use the same kind of model of gamified course design to see if that will have any impact on uh, a student success and a student uh, retention. Okay, so as, you want to say something? Yeah, I think we have time for, uh, for questions. Okay. Go ahead, yeah. yeah. The question was about how do you balance competition with uh, collaboration, good question, <laughs> right? And you remember you're talking to someone who's kind of skeptical about all this anyway, but let me just report to you what I saw. On the discussion board, which I had required each week, I would see call outs like this. Any blue belts out there who can help me? I'm a yellow belt. And guess what happened? The blue belts, who are awfully proud to be blue belts, right, they come in and they, they give their advice. And so I think, uh, I don't think competition necessarily has to be uh, mutually exclusive with Collaboration. Yeah, would you? Yeah. How about I take a question while uh, Ray pulls up the uh, yeah. module for the leaderboard? Go ahead. I know nothing about judo, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia is your friend. So, so I'm, I'm ashamed that they're calling me sensei and so on. <laughs> it's a sham. The whole thing is just a.
No, it's not, okay. Good. Let me respond to this question quickly. Everyone in Western civilization knows about white belt or black belt, and everyone wants to be a black belt. So I went to the uh, workshop earlier where she talked about the value of a framework that everyone al already understands. And most people already understand how belts work in karate or judo. Right? So automatically they understand, ah, oh, I see, these are levels I have to work through. So that's the value of that, whether I know anything about judo or not. And, and your question was, right. When I say that they're done with the course, I simply mean effectively they are locked out of progressing through the module because you have to hit the requirements as Canvas easily lets you set up you know, what they must see and what they must complete before moving on. They're effectively done. I don't withdraw them or anything else, but they're stuck. How about, uh, yeah, right, right there. Good. Ray, would you go to the top of the modules where there's sure. the shite? So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go entirely to competency. Okay, the uh, how am I going to, the question was, how am I going to go deeper into gamification next semester? I was playing around with this competency-based model because really I'm still grading as usual. The only thing is you can't get an F and keep going. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all the way to now, rather than everyone having to work from white belt to black belt, I'm going to move to the model of, depending on how far you get, will determine what grade you earn. As I have it now, you have to go from white to black. And how you perform through each of those is the grade you get. That's the more traditional model. I'd like to set it up so that if you only get the green belt, fine, but you only get your C, or whatever it may be. And secondly, as I said, I, I was uh, a bit lenient this time where I would allow people to continue on if they only earned a D. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump, bump that up. That's what I meant by deeper into gamification. For just a moment, Ray, if you'd go over into the, or excuse me, all the way, enter the Shaijo. <coughs> Competition area. Ace of clubs, queen of spades, crazy eight, and so on. This is my simple way of getting around FERPA, right? I don't have the right to be telling, using people's names to say who's doing what, even though this is not connected to grades. All I did was pull from a deck. I assigned everyone just by email, just sent out a quick email to everyone of their Shaijo identity. I think they liked that too, right? Their secret identity, right? <laughs> and uh, you know, who wouldn't like being the ace of, the ace of clubs? That's kind of cool. So I would update. When I first got started, I would update this all the time, right? But I learned you, that you can kill yourself. So now I update the Shaijo every three or four days, and no one has complained about that. So, so I just have a, uh, an Excel sheet on the side that I, I punch in their numbers whenever they do the sorts of behaviors that I've laid out in the syllabus for Shaijo points. I throw it into the, it's all very low tech, almost embarrassingly so. And then I update it when I get a chance. Let, yeah. <coughs> Good. This is something I'm also going to change. I'm going to be more firm, right? Because you give someone enough uh, rope, how's the saying go, right? So uh, I'm going to move away from that. But I wanted the idea of that you have your own future in your own hands. <laughs> and it just didn't work out as well as I would have hoped. So I think in the future, I, I will have due dates built into the progression, whereas what I did the first time around was had a suggested schedule in the syllabus. And then I would use Canvas's send message to all who, whoever had not completed something at the time and say, uh, you're on a track to difficult times if you don't get going. Right. Qu question right there in the back. What was the motivation for? What was the motivation for? Uh, <laughs> The, the real answer is that this, uh, this transition in my own life of, being, uh, of buying into what technology can do, in other areas of my life, I had started using my iPhone and so on, and started buying into this uh, you know, 21st century, right? I, I got, my wife made me get a smartphone, I discovered apps, and the rest is history. <laughs> that, that was circa 2011. So He's I, trying to embrace technology. <laughs>
<laughs> Can I steal that? <laughs> you, it was a yes or no question, and I did not do that, but I love it. 